No, you can you can say German swear words. My PR person won't let me say anything. He's good. He's, He's good. Thumbs He's up. good. What are you Do doing? <laughs> you're, you're supposed Help to me here. <laughs> yes, there is. Have you seen Have you seen our channel? So oh, yeah, it's good PR. Schmutz. <laughs> Dummkopf. <laughs> Dumm yeah. Is Dummkopf that not, not a swear? Scheiße. No. Scheiße. 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 Is that a swear? Yeah. We accept Scheiße. Scheiße is good. Yeah. I mean, I prefer to swear in English because it has a you little bit more power too, for me. But um, <laughs> so if I get really angry, it usually comes out in English, not in German. You can do that. We can bleep that. <laughs> what the Scheiße? <laughs> <laughs>
with a capital T. I never did And then did it that. turns into this debate where we're just like over-informing and throwing these facts out there. And when we remember that, that underneath the difference in ideologies is a relationship between people. And a healthy process is not about winning a debate and being right. It's about connecting. It's about sharing our understanding, our thoughts and feelings, and understanding the other person's thoughts and feelings. And when you know that, then your goal is connection and mutual understanding. And even the most difficult topics can be talked about. Do you know our channel, our, our yeah. videos? Yeah? I've se well, I've seen your videos oh, before, so. Great. We even have uh, subtitles now, right? I mean, we have the, our, one of the most viewed uh, videos actually about um, carnism. carnism. Mm -hmm. It's about you and your book. Yeah. And it's one of the most viewed, it's really good. And the, the intro, we always do like an intro, mm -hmm. is about eating a dog, our dog, yeah. my dog. When we do video, we always say it's very important to be positive. We think that humor, for example, is a very good weapon against skepticism. Do you agree with that? Humor is, has historically been used as both a tool in maintaining oppression and a tool in transforming oppression. When we use humor appropriately, it's a way of breaking through the, the insanity in some ways and highlighting how ridiculous certain things are, certain forms of oppression are. Um, humor can also be used, and a lot of vegans, maybe you guys have experienced this, in a hostile way to maintain oppression um, you know there's a lot of hostile humor directed against vegans yeah. as a way of silencing or repressing vegans so yeah and, and if you can you can take the issue seriously because it is a, a serious issue but it doesn't mean you have to take yourself too seriously and if we can if we can present that it can help people feel a little bit more lightness around us I have one more question because I mean I think this is truly so important for vegans because I mean I went through this trauma we talk about the way I went through, we talk about, we call it the Alyosha way, mm -hmm. which is basically the yes. aggressive, annoying, vegan way that I chose, <laughs> not really chose, I just, I don't know what happened. Uh, we would like to change the book now and implement that in there. Is that possible? Implement yeah. what, what in there? The term, yeah, the Alyosha way. Because oh. we, we want to copyright that basically. That was his, his journey through you know, <laughs> becoming a vegan. So I vegan. think there should be like a chapter called the Alyosha way. Okay, send it to my publisher. And like, Send me an I'll email. let them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Work with you. Thanks. I mean, I know you're, you're saying it's too late for you. The, what I write about in the book, some of them are just basic principles and tools for healthy relationships and communication, you know, with or without the vegan issue being involved. Um, and, and it's also a book that's written for vegans to be able to give to meat eaters. It's not just for vegans. It's not just a book saying, vegans, you have to try even harder than you're already trying. I mean, to some degree, obviously, I want to give vegans tools and principles but I also wanted to give vegans a book that they could give to other people and say, if you read this, you'll understand, you'll understand me better. I actually have in the back of the book, I have some scripts that vegans can just photocopy, change the words if they want to, and um, further back than that, and give to the people in their life to help the other people understand what the world looks like through vegan eyes, like, dear non-vegan, it's a letter to a non-vegan. That's really good. I mean, for me, actually, you did help me a lot to change because we found a positive way and uh, I read the, book, the first book and um, for me it was really good because there was one, one thing you said that you're, you don't really help the animals yourself or anyone if you're depressed and sad and angry at everyone. And that kind of, I don't know, opened something in me, changed something in me. So, yeah. Thank you, I guess. Jim, I have uh, the last question. Says, when and why do you become vegan? Um, I, I talk about this in my um, in some of my talks. I became vegan after eating a, a hamburger that was contaminated with a bacteria that landed me in the hospital on IV antibiotics, and I was really, really sick. And it was a stomach thing. So you know, after you're sick from eating something, you just don't want to eat that food anymore, um, at least for a while. And for me, it was meat. Um, so I just stopped eating meat because I was disgusted. And then I became interested in information about my new diet, which was vegetarian at the time. And then I discovered a lot more information than just how to cook vegetarian foods and I, I realized what was going on in the world but what what actually led me to the work that I do was that when I started to talk about what I had learned the atrocity that is carnism nobody around me was willing to hear what I had to say they would all be like don't tell me that you'll ruin my meal and I was completely like how, how can rational, compassionate people just shut down like this when it, when it comes to this issue? So, so that part motivated me even more to become an activist, to like really understand this very bizarre psychology that was influencing us. So we, we actually do have a lot of vegan, 
viewers, I think. Uh, do you have one last tip for them to make a change for the animals, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing that um, could be helpful to, to many vegans, vegans are very um, often very good at focusing on the needs of animals and thinking about the needs of others um, and don't realize that there's... A, Vegans can tend toward, and a lot of people can do this, and I see this a lot in the vegan movement though, tend toward sort of a moral perfectionism, where there's this idea, this feeling that it's never enough, that I'm never good enough, that I'm never vegan enough. Um, and I really encourage um, vegans to, to reflect on that and to be more open and compassionate and spacious and not so rigid in their the way that they understand themselves and also other vegans. And of course, many vegans don't feel this way, but the trauma that many of us experience can cause us to become morally perfectionistic and to feel almost like guilty that we're not suffering. And this incredible sense of urgency for the animals that drives us to lose our ability to self-reflect and, and think more spaciously sometimes. Uh, is this going to come out in German? That's the plan. Um, hope is for next year that it'll be out in German in 2018. Then you can read it as well. <laughs> so thank you very much, it was very interesting. Yeah, it was uh, an honor to meet you and uh, everyone, really, I, I recommend everyone to read the book. And the first book, we talked about it a lot in our channel. Thank you guys. It was it's a been pleasure. A lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs>